always trying to learn new things. Problem is time. I had many different jobs before I finally found my calling. I used to wake up at 5 in the morning to go work in the factory. After that job, I was a call operator for a telecommunication company. Then after, I became a florist too. At some point, I was also an illustrator and I dabbled with photography for a while. This constant change gives me comfort. I am always exploring. I will probably do that for a very long time. For this project, I will be creating a mixed media sculpture using both organic and inorganic materials. These are the materials you will need. I first mix cement and pour it into a pre-made mold. Then I place part of the dried twig onto the cement. Leave it to dry, it should take about 2 days. Once it is dry, draw a circle around the base where the twig sits. Add glue to the circle and even it out with a brush. Then add fine turf onto it. Once it is dry, brush it off and set it aside. Next, we will be working on flower petals. I got someone to help me laser cut laminate sheets. You can explore other materials. I glue larger and smaller petals together, creating a layering effect on my design. Then add the petals to the base of a dried Craspedia plant. Next, add the stigma of the Banksia flower onto the base of the Craspedia. I thread a dry Scabiosa stellata petal through the stem of the Craspedia. Gently drill a hole through the twig and glue the flower. Then, I pour some crystal black sand into the hole of the cement base. I place some cement towel pieces on top of the crystal black sand. Finally, I add an incense, figurine and a balancing twig to complete the sculpture. This mixed media sculpture is the perfect conversation starter for your home. Place it on open shelves or coffee tables to add that calmness to your space. Harvesting and being able to share it brings me the greatest joy. Gardening never crossed my mind when my wife and I moved into our new home until her mom gave us some plants. They flowered but they didn't bear fruits. I was curious and I wanted answers. I couldn't find anything in the bookstores.
I stumbled on a local online gardening community. Others have similar questions. I decided to document my gardening adventures and share it with others. Love thy neighbour is my way of life. For this project, we will be growing kailan and red bayam. Delicious, stir-fried or steamed. These are the basic materials you will need to grow your leafy greens. I start with filling my pot with lacquer. Just add enough for a good base. Next, add pre-mixed soil to your pot. Add enough to fill your pot till it's about an inch from the brim. I bought seedlings from a reputable local farm. This shortens the time to harvest your crops by half and supports the local business. Give each seedling enough space so that it can have room to grow to a substantial size. Gently mist each seedling with water before setting it near a window where it can get plenty of sunlight. Here you can see the kailan in three different growth stages. It flowers as well. And here is the red bayam in three different growth stages. It takes about two weeks to grow this tall. Here's a tip. If you're growing kailan and if you're wondering when you can harvest these vegetables, you can actually harvest them when they are about a foot tall. When it comes to design, the more things stay the same, the more it should be different. I spend a lot of my time thinking and questioning my ideas. When I design, I try to think beyond just functionality and aesthetics. One day, while I was going through different materials while working on a project, I noticed that there was too much material waste. Staring straight at me was a piece of cardboard. That was when I knew things had to change. Today, I am designing everything with cardboard. We even call our company Paper Carpenter. For this project, I will be working on a living room for a family with kids. The idea is to create a home space that's earth-friendly by living harmoniously with sustainable materials. For this project, I will be creating an entire living room with cardboard. Plants add a touch of colour and natural freshness in a dry cardboard environment. This selection of tropical plants can be grown indoors in any climate, some of which have air cleaning properties that help remove toxins and improve quality of air at home. When space is at a premium, how you choose furniture becomes important. Cardboard is convenient and practical.
that you can maintain start small. It can be on stands, tables or shelves. <laughs>